Well, I would like to welcome each of you today uh, to our service and uh, Wednesday night to share with you once again some of the things that the Lord has shared with me. And uh, I'd like to welcome all of you uh, here. And as you know, we try to just make sure everything is running. And so give me just a moment here and there we are. God bless you. Um, I um, thank you for watching on Wednesday night. If you feel like, again, this is something that would be a blessing to other people, I'd like to ask you to share this after you've listened to it. Um, sometimes um, it's good to share and other times it's just for us. And so um, tonight I want to talk to you about the blood of the Lord. And so uh, at this time, I'm going to just have prayer with you. And we're going to get started here. So may the Lord bless us as we do this tonight. Get my earpiece in and we'll be ready to go. Father, we thank you, O oh God, this evening for this opportunity, dear Lord, uh, to be here, Lord, to hear what you have to say. We thank you, Lord, for each one who will listen to this. We thank you for those, O oh God, that are uh, in need of these words, that they will actually, O oh God, be blessed by you to receive help from you. Father, we commend all of this into your hands. I pray, Lord, that people will receive salvation, sanctification, the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. I pray, God, they'll find their place in the house of God, their place in the body of Christ, their, their calling of God, Lord, uh, as you have called all of us, Lord, into the harvest these days. Dear God, as, since the time you uh, first called the apostles, you have been calling people. And Lord, when we receive you, you have You've saved us, O oh God, to save us, but you've saved us to be used by you, Lord. So to be with you, to be used by you, Lord, to reach others for you. I thank you, God, for everyone who will hear these words. Jesus, I ask you in your precious name, help me and help them, help us all. Lord, that what is said tonight will minister what you would have ministered, O oh God. We lean on you in Jesus' name and your anointing. Amen and amen. Uh, <clears throat> as we uh, get started here tonight, I um, would like to say that last uh, Sunday we were blessed uh, to have two become members of our local church. They had gotten saved a few weeks ago. They got baptized last week, week before this Sunday, and then this Sunday, uh, with their hearts open, they said, we want to be a member of this church. And they were, they were excited about what God had brought them from and what he had brought them into in him and his son. And so we praise the Lord for uh, what had been, um, what God had done in their lives. And so I um, learned even more that there were more that needed or wanted to become uh, become a member and wanted to be baptized. And uh, just a tremendous service last Sunday. The presence of God was very real. So I want to announce that every Sunday we um, start at 10 o'clock uh, Sunday school. I think we had a tremendous Sunday school this past week. And um, I'm going to throw this out to whoever can hear it. And we're going to keep bringing it up. But uh, we are in a time where there's great pressure upon our families. And then there is each of us personally. And then there is also the tremendous work of the Lord that, that the Lord has called all of us into. So in various countries around the world, there's great trouble. Uh, Christian people uh, are, it isn't just kind of, 
subtle attacks on Christian people, but rather it is it is it is actually the government forcing people to stop being Christians if they can do it. And they're doing this by force in China, in India. They won't allow people to convert to Christianity. Uh, and it's very possible their own family would kill them if they did. They won't allow people to preach Christianity. Even though they claim freedom of religion in Russia, much of the same, you know, the hammer and the sickle, the iron curtain is still there. And they don't want anything but the atheistic ideologies of communism in China, Russia, the Hindus, and in the Islamic countries, the very same thing. They don't want anything to come in that is um, in opposition to their, their belief system, whatever it is. Even in our country, I'm going to, I didn't plan to share this with you, but in our country right now, um, I don't believe I'll be put off of uh, Facebook by saying this, but there is a new law that is trying to be passed called the Equality Act. And last night I went through and read that myself uh, in its entirety. And I will encourage all of you to read it. And I'd like to say good evening, my brother and sister. Uh, so good to see you. Uh, but I'd like to encourage you to go to your computer and pull up that act. It's called the e Equality Act. And I'd like you to read what it says. I know, and our church has sent out internationally, or at least in this country, a, um, um, a somber um, message concerning this particular act as to what it's going to do. And you need to read that and become educated in that so that you know what we're facing, particularly as Christians. Read it very closely, particularly as Christians. We are going to face this if it passes and the president signs it. Uh, it is absolutely in places anti what we believe, and they will force us to either obey that law or break the law, and we won't be sitting here going to them, and then we face it. This is coming to us, the house of God, immediately upon its passage. So I encourage you to read this, because this is from Satan, to be clear. I understand it. I know what they're trying to do on a certain level, but there are things in there that are absolutely going to be something to stop the house of God. So I encourage you to go read this act. And uh, if you feel to speak to your congressman, that's another area that I won't get into. But I will tell you, we need to know what is coming our way. I hadn't planned to go this direction. and I don't know how far I will. But uh, you do, some of you remember Daniel when um, the um, um, counselors that were ungodly were very jealous of him and the three Hebrew children known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And it was uh, for both Daniel and those three men, uh, there was a fire that was going to come. And uh, they, uh, these counselors got together and said, you know, Daniel has been promoted by the king up to the highest. He's above all of us. Um, the scriptures actually said that the wisdom of Daniel and his brothers was 10 times better than the wisdom of the worldly counselors that the Babylonian king had originally. And we find that he, um, these counselors got together against Daniel, came up with a document that would be legal in Babylon, that if the king was persuaded to sign it, even, even the king could not countermand it if he thought better of it later. But it actually was against Daniel, how they could get rid of him. And I want you to know that in our country right now, there are forces at work that are trying to get rid of every vestige of Christianity. They may have started here, there, and yonder, but it's working its way right down to the house of God to stamp out the name of Jesus in this country. Uh, I have already made my position known in some of the messages that I have preached 
that I will not be bowing to any culture and I will not bow to any illegal law as far as God is concerned, any laws that are against the law of God. However we have to do the preaching of the gospel, we're going to do it. I'm preparing myself. I know that there are some out there. This is not what I intended to talk about, but I know that there are some out there. I think they're called doomsday preppers, or I think that's the term. But I've seen some of their shows some years ago where they were going out and finding a hideout where they could store all kind of food and, and supplies in case suddenly the, maybe the country was overrun by another country and they would have something to live on. Others that weren't prepared, well, that's why they call them the preppers. They were preparing. And I want us, to, as the body of Christ that I speak to, the part that I speak to, I want us to be prepared because it's necessary that we know what's going on. So the story went on with Daniel, and this is going on in our country, and I'm saying something about it. But the story went on with Daniel that they got the king to look at this law where he himself, the king, was going to be, what's the word, put up on high. And it was going to lift him up in a way that he should have never been lifted up uh, as far as God is concerned. But he didn't see it like that. And he didn't realize what it was going to cost his friend, Daniel. And the Bible said that he, after seeing and reading this, uh, a document, this law that they were trying to bring in. They, they, the king looked at it and he thought, you know, this is pretty good. It kind of points to me a lot and it really focuses the people's attention on me. And he signed it. And what it was, was it was a law that said there was no one that anyone could pray to for a while except maybe to the king. And as such... Good evening, sister. And as such, uh, he signed this. And the Bible said, as I am saying now, I'm saying there is something out here already passed through the House of Representatives and being sent to the Senate. I'm not being political. I'm just telling you the news. You read it for yourself, but it's called the Equality Act. And this that is being passed through is headed for the president's desk if they can get it through uh, the Senate. Well, they got it through the king there in Daniel's day. And, but I want you to know, just as I am saying to you tonight, Daniel, the Bible said, when he knew that this law, this decree had been signed, he was a man who prayed every day, three times a day. And he had his window open where he would pray publicly. And the Bible said that as he prayed, uh, people could see him. Well, the scripture said when he knew that this document or decree for the whole empire had been signed. I want us to know tonight that we who know the Lord, much less those that don't know him, but those of us that do know the Lord need to know that there is a... <laughs> It just kind of came to me just now. There is a handwriting on the wall right now for us who are Christians. And it's not meant for our good. It's meant for evil toward us. And when Daniel saw this go through, he saw it happening. The Bible said when he knew that it had been, um, uh, it had been signed by the king, he went right back to do exactly what he had been doing before. He prayed to God as he had as before. And pretty quickly, as it is in China, and in Venezuela, Colombia, in Russia, in the Hindu countries, in the Muslim countries, uh, where they have the laws of, of, of Islam and the laws of, I don't know what it's called, but the Buddhist religion, all of these are anti-Jesus Christ. And as they hear of you, and even now, in China... The children in school are being instructed that if they see their parents speaking to Jesus, doing anything contrary to the atheistic doctrines, uh, philosophies of that leader over there, and communism and Chinese philosophy, they are to, they are to alert somebody, even absolutely on their parents, 
Likewise, on the internet, they have some fine name they have drummed up uh, there in China uh, where it's something about protecting the security of the fatherland or whatever it is, uh, whereby that if anybody on the internet happens to see anyone else out there saying anything contrary to what is being um, uh, uh, promoted and hammered and what's the word, rammed down the throats of those people that they are to alert the authorities and tell on those people. They want to remove them from society. Millions of people right now need our prayers. They're not Christians, but they are people and they need help from God over there. And then there are all of the Christians over there in all of these countries that are trying to serve God. But this thing has come here also. And this is kind of a flip of the scripture, but you get what I'm saying. The Bible speaks about a time when in the early church, the apostles who were working miracles and going from here to there to there around the world of the then known world came to a certain city. And these were the words of the people that didn't want them in that city. It said, these that have turned the world upside down are come here also. I'd like to say to us today, these ideologies, these philosophies, that the, these things that are from the pits of hell itself have come to this country to turn this country upside down also like it has turned the rest of the world upside down. And I say to all of us tonight, I'm going to say something just a few minutes about the blood of Jesus. This is where I, what I was really going to talk about this evening. But I want you to know, I will, if you will, please share this. Please share this. I ask my church members to share this. I want you to share what the enemy is doing. We need to know just like Daniel did, and then we need to do what Daniel did. Uh, may I say to all of us today, one of the, oh, hallelujah, one of the things that the Holy Ghost is to do in our lives. These are my words for it, but they're better words in the Bible. But it's to give us a holy backbone. That when trouble comes, we don't bow down. Amen. As the three Hebrew children did not bow down when the king set up his image. They wouldn't bow. When the decree was signed in Babylon, Daniel did not bow. My Lord and my God, we're living in a country where churches that once were filled with people, saved and sanctified, shouting in the presence of God, have completely turned over to the devil under this false fairness doctrine of inclusivity. Uh, by the way, God is no respecter of persons. And he never has been, but he is certainly a respecter of what is righteous and what is sinful and what is evil and ungodly versus what is righteous and pure and holy. He is a respecter of that and he will not accept the one. I don't care how much they want to come to the same table. I don't care how much they want to coexist. I don't care how much they want to negotiate. There is no room in the house of God for the evil doctrines of this world. The evil views of this world. We're living in a time right now, amen, where the church needs to make a disruption everywhere we are. I'm talking in my office. Nobody's coming in here to take me away and put me in jail yet. But over in other countries, they have destroyed the the church houses that people spent their money and their lives building up with what little they had have been completely destroyed. The word of God has been removed. The pulpits destroyed. The pastors put in prison. Their families in prison. And the people have had to run for cover. Don't think America has escaped because right now there is a very black cloud over this country of the evil of thoughts that are coming from everywhere now, from the pits of hell, to bring this country to something she should have never gotten into. Amen. And if the house of God does it well, let's put it another way. Let's put it another way. There was a song years ago said, uh, talk about a man who loves his Jesus. Here's one. Here's one. 
Hallelujah. I want to say tonight, <laughs> hallelujah. I don't know what will come my way, but I know one thing. Here's one man who is very, very thankful to be saved, and I will not be bowing to any action. You may find me in jail, and nobody's able to come visit me. I may not see any of you after a while, and I'll be alone in there, but I will not be alone. The Lord will go with us no matter what comes. He will make a way that we are able to bear what we're going to face. What scriptures are you talking about, brother? Son? I guess I'm in Daniel right now quite a bit. But I'm saying to the house of the Lord that I'm speaking to, we must listen. Listen, in this local church right here, in the past few weeks, um, praise God, there has been uh, in fact, several weeks now, we've been knocking on doors. You look around at churches that are dying all over the place. There's nobody that has a vision to do it. The leaders don't have a vision to do it. The people have no mind to do it for the most part. And they're getting older and older and dying off and dying off. And church houses are dying off. And people actually, <laughs> how shall I put this? How shall I put this? Something, in some cases, has been substituted for that which once was real, and people are flocking to it, just like Paul said to Timothy, said the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. I want to tell you, Church of God, of which I am a part of this organization, we have been called ever since we've been in existence to go ye, go ye, go ye, in this local church at this present time, almost 20% of the people attending here are here brand new in the past three and four months because somebody has gone, somebody has invited them, and they are now inviting others to come. And they have shown up. And even, I tell you, what a time we had last Sunday. What a time the Sunday before. And we didn't even get out of church until about 1.33, we took the, about the third Sunday back, God moved but I believe it's because, church of God, we have become faithful to some things that are, they are absolutely essential. We are to go with this gospel, but this blackness that has come into our country is the very, this blackness that has come into this country is from the pits of hell. It is a darkness, oh God. The Bible said, however, said this, the light shineth. In the darkness, and the darkness cannot get a hold of it, can't comprehend it, can't stop it. My God, my God, my God. Oh, the house of God is a city. The light of the world sat on a hill, and she's not to be here. This is not at all what I intended to preach, but let's go this way a while. Let's go this way. This country is being invaded from all kind of ideologies they didn't used to be here like this, but they're here now and they're in the leadership. They're in our school systems to a place now where they are like lions and tigers and wolves in the school system. Do you hear what I'm saying? They're teaching our children ungodly things. Whatever happened to reading and writing and arithmetic and, uh, you know, maybe history and social studies, whatever happened to those things, uh, they're gone now. Now everything is becoming activism activism. We are there. It has just transformed into this thing called activism. Teachers are activists. The school leadership are activists. And they all want to talk about something beside reading, writing, and arithmetic and learning uh, things that will advance you intellectually to become able to work in the fields that are are out there for uh, waiting for laborers so you can provide for your family as long as those days exist. But it's happening right where our kids are. Right where our children are. But where's the church? Well, as for me, the brother said in the Old Testament, he said, listen, you can serve the gods, Israel, that, uh, of the people that we have destroyed, the gods they served. You can go serve them if you choose. But he said, as for me and my house, one brother said at one time, he said, I've crossed over the Rubicon now. I've gone too far. My pastors uh, 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 back in Sheridan, Wyoming, used to sing the song, I'm too far upon this journey now to ever think of turning back. Oh, I feel the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. But I believe God wants our churches to get lit up. 
lit up in the Holy Ghost and get out of our walls and actually go knock on doors. Mama, I guess it's all right to say. <laughs> I guess it's all right to say this now. I had an opportunity to pastor a church one time for a very short time. I was an interim pastor for just a little while. And uh, as soon as I got there, I said to them, I'm not going to be your pastor in as an interim pastor. While I'm here, I'm going to be your pastor. I'm only going to be here a month. But while I'm here, I'm going to be your pastor. And as soon as I could, I said, let's get out of here and go knock on some doors and see if we can't get some brand new people in here. The church went with me. We went out knocking on doors and, 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 and I believe they loved it. But when the day came, I, 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 it is not important anymore what anybody thinks about this. But when the pastor finally arrived, one of the very first things I hear from the people, I wasn't asking anything, but there came a day when I saw some of them, they said, you know, Brother South, he said this when he came in. He said, we will not be knocking on doors. It wasn't too long till everyone in that church was gone. There was no one left. They left him. I want you to know, if we will not go, people will leave. God will leave. The glory of the Lord will leave. He didn't save us to sit. He didn't save us to just continually eat ourselves of the good things of God, but never share them with anybody. He saved us like he did Peter and James and John and all of the 12. He said, I am calling you, amen, to become fishers of men. The church of God of prophecy must once again return to the roots in heaven. Jesus said, as my father has sent me, even so send I you. When Daniel knew the writing was written, when I know one day these things are written and Congress has passed them and the president has signed them, I'm going to preach the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. My wife won't like to see me in jail, but I may have to go. Uh, they may cut us off of Facebook, but I may have to go to something else. But I tell you, I'm going to shine wherever I am. <laughs> I'm going to shine. This is too valuable, too precious to me. And I will not let my light be hidden under a bushel. Oh, house of God, all of you that are listening. We need to not talk about this like we know all about it if we've not been doing it. But we need to get out and go and visit people, see how they do, see those. You're going to find that people who are dressed up nice are depressed, oppressed. Some of them are possessed. You're going to find their marriages are in trouble. You'll find some of them have been saying, please, God, please, please show me a church where your spirit is moving. I'm so thirsty. I'm so hungry. Show me. Pastor, I didn't even know there was anybody like that. Well, you won't know it if you stay in the building. But if you'll go ye, you're going to find people everywhere that are saying, I want this. And in the building, amen, when we gather together, as the Lord said, we're going to find the glory of the Lord coming down because he's pleased with his house. Oh, yes, he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's going to be looking for us. He's going to be looking for us to be faithful until death. But anyway, Daniel, when he knew it was signed, he was there to know. He was in a position to know everything. None of this escaped his look. And it needs to be that our churches, all of our churches, all I speak to this church of, of whom I am jealous over. I was raised in the church of God of prophecy and I am jealous over her with a godly jealousy. I don't care what you think of me. I don't mean that in a bad way, but whether you like me or don't like me, whether you're with me or not with me, it doesn't matter anymore. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. We must be shaken. Oh, yes. Out of any lethargy, shaken. Out of slumber and being at ease in Zion, the people are dying all around us while I'm speaking. And they need somebody to bring them the gospel. That's why Jesus' blood was shed, that I might be saved, but not to hoard it up. I was given the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. The old song said, Jesus, 
paid it all. Another song said, I know it was the blood saved me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood saved me. Well, years ago, we sang the song, there's power, power, power in the blood. Wonder working power. Oh, praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Power in the blood of Jesus. Oh, there's power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. My Lord and my God, why would we want to keep this blood to ourselves? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. When he knew it was signed, I know this is going on. Now you know it. Share this message, if you will. Share it with everybody. And if they cut you off in one place, why go to Messenger and share it there. They don't cut that off. They'll let it go to as many people as you want to send it to. But share it with everybody. Amen. We know the handwriting of the devil is on the wall. And his handwriting is to destroy us. Oh, yes, it is. Every way he can, by every method he can. He's using the schools. He's using the laws. He's using the Congress. He's using whatever he can use. But I say, oh God, if you can use anything, you can use me. Joshua, I believe it was, said it like this. You can go out here and serve these other gods whom, who, who these people serve that we have destroyed and taken their land if you want to. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. This is in uh, Joshua <laughs> and the book of Daniel. You can find this for yourself. The Apostle Paul said this. He said, I have warned you for three years in the book of Acts. I believe it was the 20th chapter, 15 through 20. You'll find this. But he said, I have warned you for the space of three years with tears that after my departing, when I die, grievous wolves are going to come in amongst the flock, not sparing the flock. I'm warning you, and I've been warning you. As a pastor, I'm not here to tickle anybody's ears. I'm here to preach sound doctrine. I'm here to tell you the truth that'll set you free and keep you free. It'll set me free and keep me free. And I want to say to all of you, I thank all of you for watching, but I ask you all, I implore you, not because I preach so well, but we need to hear the shaking voice that says, oh church, shake yourself. Get up from the dust. Don't be at ease in Zion. The lost are everywhere, but we sure shouldn't be a church that's sound asleep on these things. I thank God for the church we are here at, at Restoration, and I'm going to speak about us. If you're looking for a church where the Lord is moving, don't come here and wait for it to happen. Until you get here, pray and pray and pray and pray and pray with us, and we're going to pray and pray. You may be a visitor. You may have what I want to say. You may have, you may not know anything about us, but you sure want God to come when you come. So why don't you just join us and pray with us that God will show up here because he surely has been showing up. I'm able to say that. That's why I'm able to invite you to Jesus here, not to us, to Jesus. But when you come, come in praying. Come in looking for the Lord to move. Come in looking to get a hold of God. And if you know him, to worship him in spirit and in truth. If you don't know him, come in here praying. Say, God, help me. I want to be on fire for the Lord. I don't just want to sing about it. I want a fire burning inside of me that I cannot be still with this gospel. Jesus paid it all. My, what time is it? If you don't mind bearing with me a little bit longer, I'm going to share with you a bit of what I had was going to speak on tonight. But I want you to know that Daniel, when he knew the writing was signed, he went right back up and kept on doing what he was, do what he was doing that was right in the eyes of God. They told on him. You might as well expect it. You might as well expect it from now on. Anybody that gets saved anywhere, Satan is coming to get you. You might as well know that up front as to, <laughs> That's what they do in the army. They they're trying to prepare you for war. When you go to war, you need to know they're coming to kill you. And Satan is coming to kill us. He's coming to destroy us. Jesus said, the thief cometh not before. This is St. John 10 and 10. The thief is, is, 
the thief has come uh, to steal, to kill, and destroy. He said, but I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundant. Uh, the Lord said in, uh, in uh, Isaiah, he said, I just read this. I won't stay a whole lot longer here tonight. Uh, but Isaiah chapter 1, verse 11 uh, through 20, I believe it is. He was speaking to his own people, the people of God, the Israel. And they were in a bad fix with God. And he said, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, says the Lord? Maybe it'd be easier if I could read it here. Uh, here. He said, to what purpose is all of this that you're doing? I am full of the burnt offerings. I'm, in other words, I'm tired of it, of rams and of fat and the fat of fed beasts. I delight not in the blood of bulls and of lambs or of he goats. When all of you come to appear before me, who has required this at your hand to, to tread in my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Your offerings, your, you know, what you do in front of me that I've commanded, but because you're not right before me. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense, which should have been sweet to God, is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths that God called for, and the calling of assemblies that God called for, he said, I cannot, he said, I cannot away with. In other words, get it away from me. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They are trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when you spread forth your hands, like you're praying to me, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when all of you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. God, it just came to me that in the passage of Jeremiah uh, 34, 33, God spoke about the people like me, ministers, the, the, the shepherds of the sheep. And he, he said this uh, more than once. He said, if you don't warn the wicked to turn from his way, he shall die in his sin. But you, his blood will be upon your head. And if a righteous man turns from his righteousness and you fail to warn him, he shall die in his sin, but his blood shall be upon your hands or upon your head. He said, I will not hear you. Your hands are full of blood. Then he says, this is the repentance that he called for. He said, wash you. Verse 16, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease. Stop doing evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Get out there where these people are that have need. And then he said, come now and let us reason together. Verse 18 says the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If all of you, verse 19, be willing and obedient, all of you shall eat the good of the land. I, I want to say this. Jesus went to the cross to give his blood. Two things, and I, I probably will come to an end here very quickly. But he's, two things when Jesus was being brought uh, from the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, that he faced. One was before the cross, the other was on the cross. But uh, the Bible in Isaiah captured this, Isaiah 53, verse 3 through 10. The Bible said, he is despised, speaking of Jesus, and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our sicknesses and carried our pains. Yet we did not esteem him. We did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. That's what he deserved. We, we, the we he's talking about is Israel. We did esteem him stricken. We wanted him struck and smitten and afflicted. Verse five, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our 
iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. And you could read some more of that. But the Bible goes on in the book of Hebrews and said in verse uh, 22 of the ninth chapter, he said, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. Had Jesus not shed his blood on the cross, before he was swept, beaten, the crown of thorns, the purple robe, somebody hit him with the open palm of their hand uh, with a hood over his head and say, tell us who hit you. They put a purple robe and a crown on him and they bowed their knees, gave a reed in his hand uh, like a scepter of a king and they bowed their knees and said, hail king of the Jews. And they mocked him and spit on him and they pulled out his beard and then they brought him to the place where they would beat him with a whip. And then they brought him to Pilate, and they brought him, and he was judged. But his judgment in, in Isaiah, the Bible said his judgment was taken away. He didn't get a fair anything. He didn't get a just trial. He didn't get any of that. He didn't get justice from anyone. He was rejected and despised. Finally, he brought him out and said, well, I've, I've questioned him. What evil has he done? And the people didn't care. They said, crucify him. Away with him. He said, oh, it, is a, it is a custom to give someone from prison to you, uh, who would you rather have, Jesus or Barabbas, a murderer? The prince of life, the prince of peace, or a murderer? Give us Barabbas, they cried out. And uh, uh, the, the, the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees and the scribes, all of that group that hated Jesus were crying out, stirring up the people. And the devil was behind that religion. Even though it was God's religion at first, the devil got in there and he got behind it all. And the next thing you know, the people said, crucify him. And they took him out through that road up to the hill, the place called Golgotha, the place of the skull. They laid him on that cross, which he wasn't even able to carry. And they nailed his hands and his feet. And then they stood him up and dropped him in that hole. And there he was for all that time. But I want you to know that while this was going on, and the blood was flowing from his brow, from his hands and his feet, from his back and his body, that blood is what would open up the door in a few hours. So as time went on, he was thirsty. He forgave the thief. The other man said mockingly, if you are the son of God, get us down and you too. Finally, he came to a place where the father seemingly left him in a certain way. And he said, Eloi, Eloi, lama." Lama Sabachthani, which is interpreted, my father, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he said this, knowing that all things were finished, he said this, that all things were accomplished. He was able to finally say those words that would make what that blood that he shed on that cross, make that blood take effect across the world. He said, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost and he died. But at that moment, the blood that Andre Crouch sang about, oh, the blood. It reaches to the highest mountain, flows to the lowest valley. Oh, the blood. Hallelujah keeps me from day to day it will never 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 lose its power he's gone on to his reward but that song was true oh the blood praise the name of the lord i say to us today the world needs the blood it's the end no it's the destruction of the darkness it's the destruction of the sin curse the cause of sin the old man the body of sin it's the it's the destruction of the consequences for the wages of sin is death. It's the, it's the, it's the end of the consequences and the sin uh, when a person will follow John 3.16 and say, Oh God, I believe in your son Jesus Christ who died for me to forgive me of my sins. I repent of them all and I ask, Oh God, in the name of Jesus, come into my heart. As our little children used to sing the song, Into my heart into my heart, come into my heart, 
Lord Jesus, come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. This is the gospel, and I close right here. The good news that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And up in heaven when he got his work done on earth and went away in death, amen, there came a day when he entered eternally into heaven and the holy of holies where nobody could come all those thousands of years opened up. And every human being on earth was able through the blood of Jesus to have come into the presence of the Father and be forgiven of their sins and become a son and daughter of God and a member of the body of Christ by the hand of God and could then have fellowship with God, able to say these words, My Father, my Father, Abba, Father, Abba, Father, what a day. And that would go on if they would follow God the rest of their lives. Always, my Father, my Father. God bless you is my prayer. I didn't get to preach hardly anything that I've written up, but God bless you. If this has meant something to you and you think it would mean something to someone else, I ask you by every means possible, share this. And then Sunday morning, Please come be with us. We're open tonight at 6.30. Adult Bible study, children's ministry, and youth ministry. And when we get enough young adults, we're going to have young adult ministry for all of them. And we're getting some young adults. Praise God. But I want you to know that at 6.30 every Wednesday. But Sunday morning, come praying. It's Mother's Day. Bring your mothers. Support your mothers. And, and come and be a blessing by just being here. And let God bless you because you came. We love all of you, and we thank you. If you have any prayer requests, uh, our address is 8120 Old North Road, Tulsa, Oklahoma. 74127 is the zip code for mailing address. Our physical address is 8120 Old North Road, Sand Springs. Okay. Our phone number is 918-245. 6869. May the Lord richly bless you. God bless you all there in Pennsylvania. We love all of you there at Owasso and around the Sepulpa area and all who have listened tonight. May God richly bless you. Come and be with us and let's fill the church up Sunday morning. Bye-bye.